Hi, my name's uh, Mr. Hamilton, and I'm going to talk to you about computer architecture as a topic. Uh, first part of which is going to be uh, what we call what are computer systems. Uh, and in this, what we intend to do is to find out <coughs> uh, what a computer system is and what are the main parts of a computer. Um, by the end of this lesson, hopefully what you should as a student be able to do is be able to describe what a computer system is, uh, list some different examples of them, understand what input and output devices are and name uh, at least seven of them, and then also be able to think about when uh, different input and output devices might be used for different situations. Okay, along with this video um, is an accompanying workbook. Um, and in the workbook there are it's essentially a presentation uh, that you complete uh, slides in um, and that's what we're going to do first of all and um, I'm, I'm going to ask you to pause the video in a moment uh, find the workbook that your teacher should have supplied with uh, this video uh, and complete the starter slide that's in there okay so pause the video now uh, once you've completed that come back and then uh, press play again on the video Okay, um, so what is a computer system? Well, I'm guessing that uh, the answer that you gave in the starter there was probably based off of whatever kind of device you maybe had in front of you. Perhaps if you're doing this on a, on a tablet, desktop PC, then you might have described that device and talked about things like its keyboard, its, uh, its mouse and screen, etc. all of the different pieces of hardware, the physical parts that make up that computer. And, and that's not that that's that's fine that's correct but i also want you to try and think about a computer system in a different way um, i define a computer system as something that takes uh, inputs um, and then it can using instructions it can process those uh, inputs um, to determine some outputs okay now based off of that sort of description actually lots of different devices we could consider as being a computer um, so, for example, a mobile phone, well, does it have input? Yeah, um, you could have a touch screen, there's microphones, there's buttons on it. Um, does it kind of have programs inside it? Of course it does, um, and it stores data, and it can then take that processed information, and it can output it to something like the screen, or perhaps it's a, an audio kind of app, or, you know, to a speaker or something like that. So, that one's not so difficult to comprehend, but let's think about something else now. Let's think about something like a washing machine. Is a washing machine a computer? Well, clearly not. Okay, it's a washing machine. But does it maybe have a computer embedded inside of it? Okay, so, well, if we start to think about what a washing machine does, a modern one will perhaps have a, an electronic display. And it will have some buttons on it and it will have a display on it. Um, and also it has devices inside of it that could be classed as inputs and outputs to the embedded computer within inside of that washing machine. So it has a motor perhaps to, to, to spin the, uh, the drum. It has a heater to heat up the water. They would be both outputs. The computer is kind of running a program and it is deciding to turn these devices on. Also, there might be sensors in there for sensing temperature or if the doors open. So there would be input devices that are feeding information into that embedded computer. So based off of that, there's actually lots of different devices that we could say um, are either a computer system or have a computer embedded inside of them. A uh, different way of looking at this could be just sort of thinking, well, what does a computer really do? So in summary, what was said there is a computer inputs information, it processes that information and outputs it. In order to do the processing, though, it will probably have to have some sort of program um, that it is stored within it. Um, and many computing devices these days will also communicate with uh, other computers or other kinds of devices. Okay, so now that we've got a description of what a computer system is, um, I'd like you to have a go at completing the workbook. Um, onto the next slide in your workbook, they'll ask you to describe what is meant by a computer system. Um, and then if you can, in pairs perhaps, you could try and list as many different devices as you can that you think are a computer system or have one embedded inside of them. Okay, on you go once again, stop the video complete the task. When you're done, come back and press play.
OK, let's have a little bit more of a think now about this idea of input and output devices. So if you want to determine different devices, if you want to think, well, is this an input device or is this an output device? The way you have to think about it is which way does the information flow? So, for example, a keyboard, OK, the human presses the key um, and then the keyboard will send an electrical signal into the computer. And the computer will then process this piece of information. It will determine what action is kind of required. And it might be um, that you're running a, a word processing program or something. What it will do is it will change the display. It will output information to your monitor that will show the letter that has perhaps been pressed on the keyboard. So the keyboard is an input device. The information is coming from the user into the computer whereas the monitor is an output device. The information has come out of the computer uh, to the monitor. So it's all about which way the information flows. Okay, I'm just gonna watch a short video now and have a look at some other uh, input and output devices. Okay, so hopefully that reinforces what I was saying about the, the flow of information through different devices. Um, <clears throat> so just to summarize again, information going into the computer, an input device, information coming out of the computer, an output device. Um, you're gonna do a task on, on this in a moment, but some of the, uh, the common issues that we have uh, when we look at devices are some things can be both input and output or also they could even be a, a device in their own right so in the last video when we are taking uh, images from a camera we could consider it to be an input device but if you think of the camera in its own in some ways it is actually a computing device all, all on its own um, but some devices can be, do both they can do input and output um, an example for this might be a joystick or a controller for a games controller. When you press uh, the buttons or move the joystick on a controller, that is information going in to the, the, the computer. But then when the game kind of that you're playing, perhaps you're uh, doing a car racing game or something, if the, the, the car goes over the, the curb, it sends information out to the controller to make the controller vibrate. So in that case, the game controller is doing both. Often though, if you, go, if you have to try and um, determine if they're one or the other, you would perhaps go for which is the most useful or the, the, the way the device was intended for.
Uh, another mistake is quite often people, just because you're plugging it in, you think, well, it's in, I'm plugging a cable into that computer, therefore it has to be an input device. No, when you plug a monitor in, you have to put the cable into the computer, but the information doesn't flow from the monitor to the computer, it flows the other uh, way. Um, and then we've got a separate class of devices that um, are neither input or output, but they are storage devices. Uh, so things like memory sticks and DVD drives, uh, these are called storage devices. Okay, um, so you've got a, a task to do now. Uh, back in your workbook, there's two um, slides that you need to complete this time. Um, the first one is a, a, a series of images of different devices and you need to move them around the slide to determine if they're either an input device, an output device, or if you think you could categorize them as doing a bit of both. They're both an input and an output device. And then on the second slide, uh, what you've got to do is you've got to list several different devices and you've got to give a description of what that device actually does. Okay, and then from that description, you can determine if it is an input or an output device. Okay, and that will be the end of our first lesson once you've completed uh, those two slides. Um, and I look forward to seeing you next time uh, where we'll start to look at uh, things like what is a robot. Thank you for watching.